Hello everybody, Talara here and welcome back to Chained Echoes. After a big confrontation in Tormund, uh, we have finished Act 2 and are now beginning Act 3. Before we get to that, however, we have some sort of flashback or alternate reality view. I'm thinking we're looking at a reincarnation of Lenny from another time. We had a similar look uh, at the end of Act 1, but either way, we are a young girl named Lenny who lives in some sort of temple or monastery. And we now need to solve a puzzle. He just gave a hint, and I gotta be honest, I did not read it at all. <laughs> so we, uh... Oh, that was easy. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna say we'll just have to wing it, but I mean it didn't it didn't take much winging. When you give it a push, the orb flies until it hits a target. Use the blocks to get the orb into the goal. So this is literally just like a complicated game of soccer. Alright, fair enough. I'm down for some soccer puzzles. The breakable blocks break only if the orb has some speed, so an orb next to a block can't break it. Oh, and orbs can stop each other. Puzzle's getting a little bit more complicated now. Oh, that one flew away. <laughs> so I think if I step on the blue, yes, it respawns. So I don't know how we're gonna get this one out. Yeah, we're gonna have to try to break the block, I think. So what if we do this? Yeah. And then this? Uh, no, I should have sent the other block first. You gotta break all the breakable blocks here, I believe. There's one. There's two. There's three. Four. Five. Six. The seven-step puzzle-solving procedure. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know all the rules. Good luck solving this one. No hints allowed, hey? So there's only one block, one bubble, a bunch of blocks... That's, I think it's just going to be kind of trial and error here. Wow, that was easy. First try. I'm a puzzle master. I think that's enough for now. Let's get some fresh air. Alright, that was fun. Not really that hard. There's something I need to talk to you about. You look awfully serious. It's about you and me. Lenny, our relationship is kind of difficult. Because we both know our love isn't supposed to be. Next month, you will officially become a teacher of the Leonar Order. A relationship between maiden and teacher is forbidden. And that's why I'm going to stop my training. Are you mad? You can't! I've never been more sure of a decision. Imagining you marrying Van makes me sick to my stomach. You can't give up your dream for me. Don't worry. I'm a man of many dreams. I'll marry you and find something different. <laughs> what could those other dreams be, I wonder? Oh, a lot of everything. Maybe I'll become a bird breeder, or I'll open my own restaurant. Oh, Timothy. Back in the present day, here is Lenny. Ah, so these are dreams that Lenny is having, and she's remembering Timothy, it looks like. So yeah, I really do think this is some sort of reincarnation process. New supporters have arrived. They want to speak to Lenny. But we'll have to wait. Lenny is busy. And you over there, how are the new supply routes? We have more and more mouths to feed. Everyone's acting as if nothing happened. Well, maybe nothing happened, and I imagined it all. Lenny's death, those huge creatures, or maybe they really did turn back time. And that Gwen. What did he- Glenn, wake up! I've got a problem here. Can you take a look? Uh, yes, of course. You really have a knack for these things. Is that a requirement when you become a pilot? Not really, it's more like a hobby of mine. Alright, that should have solved the problem. Great, I'll take it from here again. Thank you, Haku. Thank you for supporting us. Sienna saved my life. Where she goes, I follow. Well, most of the time. So be sure to thank her. I'll do that. I can't concentrate on anything. I should go ask Sir Victor about Gwen. 
All right, so back in the present day, um, we actually have the Grand Grimoire, which is rather exciting. Um, but obviously the plot is getting a bit bigger than that. Celestia is important, apparently so important that the gods are intervening, and Glenn has something to do with this. Uh, he has some secret powers that are aided by Gwen, who's been able to, uh, to speak to him in his mind, and... So let's go see if Victor has any answers to some of these questions we have. Glenn, you don't look well at all. You've been so quiet since we've returned from Torment. Sir Victor, what do you know about this Gwen? He was a fellow student of mine. We both studied under Master Bartholomew, the greatest professor ever to have taught in Nisa. Was there anything special about Gwen? Hmm, you're asking questions. It's been a long time. He was really gifted, but not very interested in class. For him, life seemed to be a game. He didn't take anything seriously. Sometimes I wondered if studying was the right path for him. But why do you want to know? Strange things are happening to me. I can hear his voice. You hear his voice? You must be imagining things. No, when we met in Torment, he confirmed it himself. What does he tell you? Nothing special, really. Sometimes he warns me when there's danger. But other than that, he just talks in riddles. I don't know what he wants from me. I've never heard of telepathic abilities in neither humans nor ours. Gwen isn't the only problem. I don't understand so many things. I remember things from my previous life. How to read, for example, or specific knowledge. But I have no real memories of my previous self. What I looked like, where I lived, nothing. Maybe we should explain a few things to them. You're right. If we explain too little, it's no good either. Come with us, Glenn. What would you like to talk with me about? There's something we need to tell you. You all look so serious. Truth be told, you and Glenn have something in common, Lenny. Lenny's memories and Glenn's knowledge of various things come from your echoes, your memories from a previous life. But you probably could have already guessed that. I already know Glenn from his previous life, and Bethraz is actually connected to you, Lenny. Do Lenny and I know each other as well? That's the thing we want to talk to you about. We can't tell you, but there are reasons for that. Listen carefully. The Echo is the soul of a human being that is not properly dissolved in the Maelstrom, and has instead passed on into a new body. Your personality, or more specifically, your strengths and weaknesses, your preferences and aversions, are the result of the experiences you have had in this and your previous life. Your body may look different, but you are the same person. Now, our mind is quite concerned with our well-being. Who can blame it for that? You remember how Damebert transferred the souls of plants, monsters, and humans, and in most cases, they either died or went insane? It would not have happened differently if the body of an infant had been invaded with the experiences in the mind of an adult. For this reason, your brain has a defense mechanism, similar to handling trauma, that seals your memories and only reveals them slowly over a long period of time. This usually lasts into adulthood. That's why these visions have increased recently. No, not visions. Memories. And well, all this is why we can't tell you anything. We had another protege once. We explained too much, and she died of her echo. We had opened a, va a valve that we can no longer close. We don't want to repeat the same thing with you two. These two amulets around my neck are life anchors. One is tied to Glenn, and the other to you, Lenny. You are the real reason Bethraz and I came to Valandis. Before we continue, what have you seen in your Echo so far, Lenny? I remember my life on a farm. My father died in an accident, and my mother became seriously ill. A group called the Order of Leonar wanted to take me in. They said I was a chosen one. When my mother eventually died, they took me with them. I lived in a palace as a special maiden, training towards some goal. I remember people dressed like priests. I remember a place in the sky called Shambhala. And I remember this group fighting the Harbinger. The ultimate evil that the church preaches about? He showed up in your memories? Not himself, no, but apparently the group has banished him and is preparing for the day he returns. So you remember Shambhala. That's good. According to the rules, we should go there as soon as possible. You want me to go to this Shambhala at once? Lenny, listen. Bethraz is with the Order of Leonar. You are a part of this group? 
at least of what is left of it. Our job is to support you. That's why they sent us here. And what about me? What about my past? I don't remember anything. Until you can remember it for yourself, I can't tell you anything. So, you want us to leave for Shambhala? What about the Grand Grimoire? That would be better to discuss with the others. Are you out of your mind? You plan to head for Shambhala? More so, for personal reasons? First we destroy this damn stone. That's our main objective. Have you forgotten? Do you know how we are to do this? Can we be sure that we have all the information? We have to wait until Cameron regains consciousness. Honestly, if that's what Lenny wishes, then I'll accompany her. Of course you will, Rob. You'd go anywhere for her. But Shambhala is dangerous, and you won't get very far without any guidance, believe me. And they are lucky to have the perfect guide in their group. You've been to Shambhala before, Sienna? You blabbermouth. Yeah, you get around a lot as an adventurer. That's why I know how dangerous it is there. Besides, Shambhala belongs to the church, and any trespassing is punishable by death. If we get caught, we're in trouble. Such words from a thief. Then help us slip in on notice, Sienna. The place we're going to is full of treasure. You may help yourself. Classic argument. Do you really want to go there just so Lenny can get information about her previous life? I mean, of course it's interesting, but is it worth risking your life? I'm begging you. Knowing you, you will run into every monster. Without yours truly, you will find this journey difficult. Allow me to come along as well. I think that sounded quite nice. Are all princesses like this? Shh. All right. I'll play as the guide since we have to wait for Cameron anyway. Don't say I didn't warn you. Thank you all very much. Shambhala is a group of Sky Islands that broke away from Hecondria. By my last count, they are northwest of Valandis. Let's rest for today. We will start our new journey tomorrow in the morning. Getting a look here at Killian and his new life. A letter from my parents. I guess I can't avoid reality forever. I worried too much once again. Nothing has changed at home. Spooky, scary owl moon in the sky. How long will it take until we can watch the moon together, sis? Perhaps it's better if you sleep some more. This world has nothing to offer you. But soon, soon I will be able to show you a different Eldrea. Even if I have to cheat, manipulate, and use any means necessary to make this world a better one. Wait and see, sis. Wait and see. Glenn. Alright, we are awake. Let's go check in with everybody. As for the age of races, there is quite a misconception among Hyams. People tend to convert age relative to Hyam years. Let's say we take an R who can live for a thousand years, and he reaches his 200th birthday. People convert it to a 20-year-old. But that's nonsense. A person with 200 years of experience does not have the same level of knowledge as a 20-year-old. It gets even better. There are people who think I was an infant for 10 years. I would feel sorry for my mother. She 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 she. I've been part of the group around Leonar for quite some time. My father was also part of it, and so was my son. So I guess Bathraz, as a, a lizard person, also has an extended lifespan, hence how he's known uh, Lenny in a previous life. These guys have anything new to say? Hello. People here don't seem to have enough money for my insurance policies. Gotta wait for your clan to get more money and raise in clan rank. Well, we're trying our best, dude. I'm recruiting everybody that I see, so hopefully we'll have enough money soon for some fancy insurance policies. <laughs> okay, anyone else around here want to chat? I feel like there's some soldiers earlier that wanted to chat, and I didn't get the chance to speak with them. Ah, Princess Amalia. I bought Cress from a wandering circus. Though he was a guard dog, they treated him rather poorly. Well, actually, the story is a bit different. I wanted to buy him, and the circus owner agreed. When we met to pay for Cress, his men overpowered my soldiers and wanted to take me hostage. 
But Cress wouldn't let them. He defeated them. Cress has been my friend from that moment on. Aw. Very nice backstory. I'm worried, Glenn. Here I am, holding the Grand Grimoire in my hands, yet I refuse to destroy it. We explained earlier that we do not know with certainty how to destroy it, and that is why we should wait. But I'm afraid that this is just an excuse. There's so much power in my hands. The stone seduces me, Glenn. What if that's the real reason I want to keep it? I'd be ashamed of myself. It's deep. It's giving me one ring from Lord of the Rings vibes, but don't worry. Lenny, I will be the Sam to your Frodo. Rob. Yesterday, Faron came by and wanted me to help him assemble some furniture. Impudence! I'm the future Lord of Flander. How dare an average nobleman make such a request? Hmm? Of course I helped him, but he still got an earful from me. <laughs> oh, Rob. Look at this monk up in a tree. Everyone's chakra is completely irregular. I need to plan out a daily routine for everyone. You can do it, man. When not in use, it's better to let airships rest in water than on land. It's less harmful for the hull, you know? You look familiar. <laughs> yeah, Tom Key, I'm your friend Glenn. Don't you remember me? You forgot already. Poor guy, we need to get him some more, uh, some more drinks to get his memory back. All right, anyone else want to chat around here before we take off on our next adventure? Looks like our group can actually learn some new skills, so perhaps we'll take this time to do that. Let's see. Glenn has most of these skills uh, purchased already. I'm going to give him more health points. Now all of his possible skills are unlocked. Nope, never mind. There's still one more tier down here. Lenny, I will give her uh, Ultra Move up. Rob is going to get... Mind plus two. Victor, I'm gonna go Ether Killer. Amalia gets. Let's give her a little bit of defense. The Fraz uh, is going to get resistances. Sienna is gonna grab some extra defense. And finally, Tom Key is going to get some uh, attack. Actually, I should have spent it on Cigarette Light, his new ability. Okay, I'll get that next time. I forgot he got a new ability by uh, drinking his magical sodas. Alright, with our skills all set up, let's head to the sky. And there is Shambhala. On the complete opposite side of the continent. So we've got a little, a little ride awaiting us. Flying Continent Shambhala. A huge tree over there must be our goal. Then let's head there and be done with this place. Wow. Sienna is, is so happy to be here, hey? <laughs> this place is beautiful. I mean, you don't want to stand too close to the edge, probably, but... Beautiful all the same. Look at that pink bird. Hope no one's afraid of heights, because we're doing some island hopping. We've also got two canned Sams ready to kill us. What's going on, man? Two canned Sam. All right. Um, also, it appears our party order has been changed, because Rob is not usually in the starting unit. Uh, so we might have to switch things up afterwards. Yeah, we've got a whole new gang here. Tukarang! Wow, that did a lot of damage. You guys weak to? Wind.
Sam's the magical trumpet takes down the pair of Toucan Sam's. Now I'm gonna get back to my regular formation. I'm sure you guys might have some thoughts on what is the best formation, so so please feel free to, to put those in the comment section down below. But for right now, I really like my starting party of Glenn, Bethraz, Sienna, and Victor. I've just had a lot of success with them, and so I want to change a, a good thing, right? All right, we're gonna do some island hopping here. This this island appears to float. Oh, who do we have here? A little birdie who ran away. What was that? It looked like a giant owl. Oh, look at these flamingos. <laughs> That's so cool. Just standing on their one little leg. a viking sword. It's an upgrade for Sir Glenn. Hey, what do we have here? Well, there's the big owl. <laughs> Be careful, buddy. It's really an owl. How cute. One that can't fly, apparently. Whoa! There's a lot of birds around here. This is a golden borb borb, which is apparently resistant to magic. This place is just a bird sanctuary. Whoa! This guy does a lot of damage. I mean, I suppose it makes sense. Uh, we are, you know, high up in the sky. Probably, yeah, lots of birds live around here. That totally checks out. That did a lot of damage. Okay. We need you. Malia, save us! Oh god, okay. Time to actually get Glenn back in here and use his ultra move. This golden boar borb. He may look just like a plump bird, but his ability melting gold does so much damage. It's it's insane. Alright. That should reduce his uh, abilities for a little bit, and then hopefully the team of Glenn attacking and Victor keeping him alive will work. How did you get two moves in a row? Didn't seem fair. Uh-oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh, it's just Victor left. Uh, what do we do here? I gotta switch out to Tom Key. He's going to use the buff overdrive. Oh, man, this golden borb is gonna wreck me! Holy moly moly. Oh! Wow, note to self, don't uh, underestimate Golden Borb. <laughs> he may be a Borb, but he's certainly not a chump. Oh my goodness. Okay, I need to go back for a rematch. I will never rest well until we defeat the Magic Borb. <laughs> I am not underestimating him now. At first I was like, oh, a single Borb, it's gonna be fine. I love how I'm using the word Borb instead of Bird at this point as well, by the way. <laughs> I'm totally embracing the golden board. Uh, but yeah, no, this this guy means business. This guy means absolute business. Let's actually switch out Bethraz 
for Lenny. Oh no, I thought he was weak to win. He's strong to win. Okay. Never mind then. What I can do though. Switch out and get some poison on Golden Board. That's the case, and Lenny is not actually effective against the border. I'm gonna get Bethraz back in because he just does more base damage. Now we are ready for Glenn's good old ultra move. Come on, Glenn, I need revenge against this bird. It's back to uh, Glenn and Victor yet again. I think this thing, he has very low health. Okay, that's good. That's good. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, melting gold is a very strong move. This dude isn't, uh, isn't messing around. Everything we got. Let's take him down. Yeah! Down goes the golden borb. Wow, that thing was weirdly strong. But hey, as a reward, we get to see not only flamingos, but hippos. This place is just full of wildlife. I love it. All right, guys. Well, we are officially up on the floating islands of Shambhala, and we are chasing our little owl friend around. So I'm going to call it a day for right here, and we'll pick up the chase next time in these beautiful floating islands. I want to thank everyone so much for watching today. We are heading into Act 3 of the game, the final third, and I'm very excited to see where the story goes. Until next time.